Okay, good morning. We are on the fourth day of the program. So we'll start today's program with a keynote by Benny Shore on teaching computer science and the other two uh, words, it's secret. Well, okay, I'm not going to expand it. Okay, thanks very so much. You're welcome. Uh, so, you know, usually you say thanks for inviting me and so on. This time, you know, it's really overwhelming. I didn't know what to expect, so I cannot say it exceeded my expectations because it wasn't clear what I'm expecting, but really it's a, it's a wonderful experience this whole conference, and I'm, thank you for all of you who, after this tiring day yesterday, you know, showed up here, so. Okay, so uh, I'm from the Computer Science School of Computer Science in Tel Aviv University, uh, and let me explain first what these weird acronyms are. So CS is Computer Science. Ah, let's see if I could make this. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so uh, teaching computer science and computational thinking at the community, that's sort of the title, the grand title, it will be, have two parts. So MS is really middle school, so teaching uh, computer science to middle school kids. And LS, maybe a bit surprising in this context, but for uh, uh, teaching really computer thinking to life science student, students. So I'll, I'll talk about two projects that I'm involved in, both at the university. Uh, okay, and I want to start with a prologue. So this is really a long journey, which, which I'm following for, you know, 15 years or something. So, it really started, I, I was on sabbatical in uh, Messi University in Palmerston North, New Zealand. I told Rod Doney once that I'm in Palmerston North and he, what? Okay, so this is a small town, you know, not so exciting, but when you're there on sabbatical with kids who are two, four, and eight years old, it's not bad to be in a small New Zealand town. It's not, you don't have to be in New York City, so basically it was not bad. And uh, so I was there on sabbatical working on computational biology. There, are some, there were some very good people there, some of them left. Uh, one day there was a, um, I think it was a computer science colloquium and some weird, really weird computer scientist came and talked about some weird stuff. And this really, okay, so the weird computer scientist is, is Mike Fellows and he talked about, uh, he talked about uh, uh, parameterized complexity. And really I got, you know, I, I really, I didn't understand much, but I liked what he talked about. And he was in Wellington at the time. So I said, why don't I come down? Or he said, why don't you come down? So I come down to their place, and I don't know, we talk, you know, very intensively about theoretical computer science for three hours, and then he says, you want to go and uh, do some boogie boarding? I said, what? <laughs> you know, I have no equipment, I don't know how to do it. No one, no worries. I've got equipment, you know, I've got a, a wetsuit, I've got the boogie board, let's go. So it continued on like that, and then they moved to, to Newcastle, so that, uh, you know, okay, so then, okay, later on, I think friend maybe showed me this, the original thing, the original version of Computer Science Unplugged, there was this yellow booklet. It was really wonderful. So the, I think I got it as a present. It was really wonderful. And I, 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 I actually taught, so my oldest son was at the time, I think third or fourth grade in this Riverday school in, in Palmerston North, and they really encouraged parents to, to participate. So I taught something, like, I think six, six or seven classes of Unplugged there, and it was really a great experience. And okay, so, and, and they continued, they, they moved to, Australia, there is a bottle of Australian wine, lots of bottles of Australian wine were involved in it, and so on and so forth. So a, a real shark at some point, and then we got caught with Fran in some currents in the ocean. So it's a whole story, but anyway, um, I really like that stuff, and, and teaching in this, uh, I, I did, was not involved with teaching kids before then, and I, I thought, you know, this is something it should continue. So we came, and I think, uh, uh, Jem said yesterday, you know, sometimes you succeed, sometimes you don't. So, so in, in this place in New Zealand, it was a great success. So then we moved, I mean, we went back, the sabbatical ended, we went back to Israel, and I said, okay, I'll, I'll have a, like an after hour class for the kids in, in my, my, son's, uh, so my son's class. Th that's great stuff, you know, computer science, great ideas. Everybody will be hooked to it. So I, I suggested that, and there was like, beginning of every year, there is like a parents uh, meeting with a teacher. So I raised my hand and I said that I am offering to do it free of charge, of course. So one of the mothers said, I don't see why my girl should, you know, go to this weird stuff instead of watching TV at, uh, at home. So what can I say? <laughs> So, okay, I, I did start it, but somehow, I don't know, there was not, not a good framework. It, I, I had like five lessons and sort of it died out. So when I reached down to two kids, one of whom was my son, I decided, okay, that's not a good thing. So, I, but, but I thought it's, you know, it's something that worth, worth maybe pursuing. So actually I was, I don't know, maybe four years later, I was in, in sabbatical in, in, uh, 
uh, Cambridge, England, and I, um, I, I taught there in my daughter's class. In, uh, I mean, and it, somehow in, in class it worked quite, quite well, and, and I, the after hours in, in Israel at least didn't work. I also taught individual classes in Israel, but somehow I felt, you know, okay, I'm teaching that my fellows go around the world and give one hour here, one hour there. If you want somehow to, to be more of a missionary, to really disperse the gospel, you know, I mean, to, to explain more, you need some other framework. So that's what I try to, to develop, and I, I want to tell you about, about these things. Uh, okay, so that's a prologue. Uh, okay, so CS at MS, so computer science at middle school, I want to, so I'm explaining the, the, the activity that we have now, and who are the, the acting characters. Okay, so there are the guys who get the lessons, and the guy who give the lessons. So the guy who get the lessons are middle, middle school kids, usually from low-income neighborhoods in, around Tel Aviv. So, you know, probably it's not as low income as you drive, like yesterday we went, but, but you could go, I don't know, bike ride. I mean, six kilometers from Tel Aviv University, you've got neighborhoods which are, I don't know, Pardes Katz, no one knows some of the places. I mean, really low socioeconomic, many foreign immigrants, maybe illegal ones, uh, some, I mean, I don't know, Ethiopian Jews who came but didn't manage to make it. Really, I mean, not, not one of the schools we teach there is the only secular elementary school in a neighborhood which is completely religious and the, 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 the municipality completely ignores him. He says that, you know, the municipality calls them to get some funds or something, so they see his phone number, you know, you, you have identified numbers that they just don't pick up the phone. I mean, amazing stories you hear, but, uh, okay, so this is one of the, like, I mean, I thought that, you know, doing this effort and teaching like kids, like my son, doesn't make sense. I mean, these guys are privileged enough and they, they will make it. it, it it's better to show this, this nice stuff to, to kids who are not that exposed to this type of thing. Okay, and the other part, again, I said I cannot do it myself. So uh, our computer science students at Tel Aviv University, mostly they're third, some of them are third and a half. And they're supposed to finish in three years, but usually they take more. So, so computer science students at Tel Aviv University, they're, they're the guys who, who do the teaching. Okay, and the objectives are to expose uh, these kids to, to, you know, to the great, the great things we have in computer science. We have great ideas, and many of them, as those of you who saw Mike and know the material, many of them, and, and you know, Matt, also mathematics, but we really do more than computer science. Most of them, not most, but many ideas could be simplified enough that they could be taught in a, in a funny and an engaging way to, to, to kids. So, uh, um, so, so we expose them both to computational thinking and also to science and technology. I'll show what I mean by that. And for many of these kids, you know, they're eight kilometers or six kilometers from Tel Aviv University, but not, neither they nor their parents have never stepped, you know, on the campus. I mean, for them, the university is like, I don't know, somewhere, I don't know, far like Mars. I mean, it's, they never get there. So we want to show them that they can do this stuff as well. They could understand that stuff. And, 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 and tell them that there are opportunities in higher education. It's not that, okay, they're in middle school, they're not going to do a master or get bachelor in computer science tomorrow, but, but we have like a unit for a scientific education at the university. These kids usually don't know about this. So whenever some kid from that neighborhood comes, they don't charge him anything. He should maybe take care of the bus uh, ticket. So. Okay, and uh, we want also to acquaint kids with the computer science industry. In Israel, it's very big. You have representative of every, you don't know, big American company. They've got development centers there, many startup companies. So we want to, many of them, one, one uh, school master told me that, you know, he asked them what are they dreaming about. And, you don't know, they, they dream about what they see around them. So then being waitresses in, uh, waitress in, in, in some, uh, you know, place where they have weddings, that's the, like their dream because that's what they see. So we want to show them, you know, that you could, to expose them to more opportunities. And we have students serving sort of a role models for these kids. So students have various backgrounds. Some of them are Arab, some of them are Israeli, some of them, I mean, Jews, Israeli Jews, all of them are Israeli. Uh, some of them did army service, some of them did not. The background that these students have, most of these kids were not exposed to. So just, I'm, I tell the, the, the students, you know, the first hour, just tell about yourself. Say, say what you're, you know, what you're doing. And then, you know, continue with the, okay, so that's sort of, the objectives we had. Um, something that we found out, like a secondary objective is for the students, I and mean, the students are strong, really. The Tel Aviv University, the computer science students, it's very competitive, it's hard to get to, most of them are very strong. We have here a graduate of two thirds of the program, Noi, uh, not the whole program, but, uh, but anyway, there are, uh, but, but, but 
them spending one semester, a weekly meeting with these kids, it really empowers them as well. I mean, they, this exposes them to challenges they're not used to. So they, okay, they had challenges in the army and they work in, in high tech and then going through the program, you know, in Tel Aviv University is not easy, but that's a different type of thing that you, you know, you have to, you have these kids who are maybe initially not that interested and you have to catch their attention and to make sure they stay with you and so on. So that's, it's a challenge. Most of the students, we give them help, but most of the students stand up to that challenge and when they finish it, they say it was really worthwhile. And some of them even say that, you know, it was changed their perspective about life or something. This is not something we, we had in mind when we, when we started this, but after this is now the fourth year that we do it and we see that this is happening. So, okay, and uh, it also improves their teaching and leadership skills because they, in many cases, Okay, in many cases, they were maybe, maybe they were group leaders in the scout or something, but it's a different story, being group leader in the scout, where everybody else is the same kid from the same neighborhood, and, 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 and teaching these kids of illegal immigrants, you know, so it's, it's a different type of, uh, so. Okay, what means to use? So, okay, that's very nice, you know, ideas, but we should do something concrete. Okay, so we started with activities from Computer Science Unplugged, so, yeah, sorry. The students are, I would say, about 23 to 25 years old, years old. Because in Israel, they do most of them, not all of them, but most of them do, the boys do three, at least three years of army, and the, the women two years of army. But some of them are younger. The Arab students don't do army, so they would probably be 20 or something. So, and some students don't do army for a very and, and what's the male-female mix in the... Okay, great question. So I think we've got about 40% female students and 60% and male. Well, overall, in computer science, I think it's about a quarter to three quarters. So, so it seems that this type of effectivity attracts a little bit more women than, than men. So, uh, yeah, and we are, that, thanks for the question. I mean, uh, I, some, I was asked, and therefore, I was asked before, so this, therefore I know. Some I see that there are more women there than men, but, you know, okay, how many women versus men are there here? It's, I, I, I could try to estimate, but, you know, it's not, uh, so, so I, I checked. So it's about 40%. Uh, okay, so. Activities of computer science unplugged. We started just with unplugged and similar activities. And after a year and a year or two, two years that we did it, we decided, I'll say a word about it later. You say the word computers to, to kids, it's not computer science unplugged, it's a great thing, but they want to touch a keyboard. Okay, so we decided to add uh, programming to this. So, and mainly we use Scratch. So, you know, Scratch was praised here more than once, so I will not do it again, but Scratch is really good. It's, it's for, designed for kids. Uh, okay, I, I, have, I think I have a slide about this. Okay, and also we have activities developed by, by the students. The, the students get credit for this course, for this activity, and part of the thing, they have to do all this teaching and so on, but they also have to design something new, so like a new activity. So we all, and they use it by themselves and also we put it on a, like an internal website or something, an internal wiki, and they also use uh, activities from, from other, other uh, students uh, that were designed by other students. And, and the students are really amazingly creative. I, okay, so computer science unplugged, okay. Mike gave a great presentation at the beginning. I'll just uh, show, okay, so it's uh, activities which were developed by Tim Bell, Ian Witten, and Mike Fellows. And okay, say, Mike said it was translated to Zealand uh, languages. Uh, Shimon Shoken from the Interdisciplinary Center in, in Israel and, and myself, we translated something like six or seven activities and we added some, something in, in that spirit. So we have like a brochure with uh, eight activities in Hebrew. Um, the students know, he, know English, but having these, these activities you know, spelled down in Hebrew is helpful. So it, we, that was one of the areas thing we discovered. I mean, you know, it's all, it's, it's on the internet and so on. It's better for the students to have it written down, you know, and, and we actually also give them hard copy in Hebrew, even though it's, it's, it's on the web. Okay, so some, some examples, you know, sending secret information. We took some stuff from there and, and actually expanded it. Uh, uh, coloring graphs, maps and graphs and, uh, I don't know, search, so, I don't know, we call it hunting submarines and so on. So, so we have this, uh, these, these activities. So this, most of you are familiar with. Uh, so, as I said, uh, the earlier experience of teaching just the unplugged uh, uh, material, we found out that the students were not happy enough. They wanted to touch a keyboard, and some students, were, we, we, we didn't manage to hook them up to the unplugged stuff. Once they touch a keyboard, they're much happier, so some others not. So, it's, we, we think it's a, it's, a, it's a good mixture. Uh, so, we use Scratch, uh, you know, cool graphics, user-friendly. 
another, okay, so for the kids, it's very important that there is a Hebrew, uh, Hebrew interface. So, you know, a loop forever, so it says, a, I don't know, a say, or something. So you translate it to Hebrew. And for the kids, the kids don't know English. So for them, just these short commands in English is a big barrier. So the fact that, that Scratch supports, you know, many languages, is, uh, including Hebrew in our case, is a big plus. Uh, okay, so there, there are also students designed activities, so we require them to do that as part of this uh, activity. Uh, typically, they're very technologically oriented. So how does a, I don't know, GPS work? How does a search engine work? See, stuff like that. The, the students are really, the students are much better technologically. You look at Noi versus me, you know, that there is different. The younger generation is much more technologically oriented than us older. And so, so it's good that they, they do so. So I don't know the example how the GPS, but and, and design, they design it in the, in the unplugged uh, spirit. So a game like, a, I don't know, a, there is something like scheduling hard disk access so that they, have, they bring some pizza or something and you want to get here or there. So, so physical things, not, uh, they don't, this is not programming. This is, uh, okay, we have a, okay, we have a website, but it's in Hebrew. So I, for most of you, it will not be accessible, but uh, uh, okay. So what's the framework? So uh, this, this, this took, some, this took some, uh, some time and some pushing with elbows, but uh, we managed to have it. I, I did it two years earlier. I did sort of a voluntary activity. So people, I managed to recruit some students. We had some, some grant from Google. So either we paid them a little bit. Most of them didn't want the money. And some uh, engineers, some from Google, some from uh, IBM. Engineers. Engineers are just the kids who graduated from the program a year later. I mean, it's not uh, some mysterious uh, thing. Um, but somehow this voluntary framework was, was, was hard to maintain. Every year I had to go around and, and, and look for, for you know, people to participate in. And, some, okay, and Tel Aviv University for a number of years has this activity of called teaching computer science in the community. It started with one of our faculty members. He had some startup which was bought by Cisco. And he, so he started working in Cisco. And Cisco said, uh, we have some money for uh, you know, contributing to the community. So they, they, they basically built some course for teaching. Uh, these were older kids, 16 years old, being, I don't know, network uh, technicians or something like that, which for, for these kids made like a profession for them. So they could. Uh, and then so he changed hands with different professors. At some point, the professor did it last, went on sabbatical, and he asked me if I want to do it. I said, yes. So then I, because I had this voluntary thing, so I said, let's put it into a course. So now it's a course. So students could get credit for this thing. So that's, OK. They could get credit for it, like an elective course. Initially, I thought it's going to be, you know, easy credit. I mean, eh, they'll come. And I, so we explained to them quite clearly that it's not easy credit. It's probably, probably the toughest elective course that they do. It's a very different nature than normal thing. You don't learn theorems and then, you know, spit out uh, the, the proofs or something. But, uh, okay, so, uh, so they get, you know, three academic uh, uh, points. We are in very tight time frame. So our, sem our semester starts after the Jewish holidays, which, you know, this is a lunar year, so it, it changes. It's sometimes between late September to late uh, October. But anyway, so the first, and, and, and we have to limit the whole thing by one semester because once we reach the exam period, which is in February or something, I mean, the students really, they have to take, they have to have time during the students. So, so we have to limit it. So, so what we do, we do an intensive training, intensive, but relatively intensive for the first two weeks of the semester. We, we, we select and interview students before, during the vacation. But the first two weeks of the semester, on Tuesday evening and Friday morning, these are times that usually nobody studies. We have two, so two sessions of three hours each, so all of, over 12 hours. What, what we do is uh, not only me, me, the, the teaching assistant, maybe somebody else come in and give some unplugged. So they see the spirit of unplugged, but in different styles, not just my style, but different styles. And we tell them, you should have your own style, but just. And also we have, a, a, not me usually, but somebody from the, 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 the unit for social intervention, a Dean student who is, who is it's a she. She's an expert on, on ped pedagogical issues. She tells them how, how should you stand you know, in front of a, of a class. Some of them have experience, I don't know, from the army, but if they're in the intelligence unit, unit in the army, you know, all the kids there are PhD level. Uh, it's not the same as, as being in this. So, so you know, what do you do? I mean, some kids uh, are not interested. They make noise. I mean, so this type of thing. I'm not saying you cannot make a perfect teacher you know, in two weeks, but some tips. Um, 
and they, subsequently, after these two weeks, we assign them to these centers, and they teach 12 weekly sessions. Uh, the groups are, not, are not, not as big as we had yesterday, 8 to 14. We found that more than 15 students starts to be, these are, they teach in, 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 in groups of two. So one of them, let's say, would be on the board, and the other one would go around, and they have this piece of paper help them to, uh, but still, uh, I, so just before coming here, I, I met some students who complained that in their group they have 19 students, not a bit too much, so we are trying to work with the center to, to see what... You don't want to kick students who start out, but then you want the whole thing to work. So it's there, you know, there are... You guys should know it better, but you know, these, these things are not... Uh, it's not an automatic pilot. You have to make sure this, it works. Um, so typically we have between 13 to 16 different centers. Uh, again, mostly low-income neighborhoods around Tel Aviv. Some Arab students usually prefer not to do it in Tel Aviv, but maybe in their own village, so we allow that, yeah. So how many centers, uh, have to do the centers? The centers, basically, it's not so much me, but it's more the, 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 the woman from this, uh, the, this uh, pedagogic unit, because she's also involved in, in getting kids from all these places into Tel Aviv University, uh, like youth uh, education. So, so she knows many of them. Some of them I, when it was voluntary, I went, like I've got a, a you know, student, uh, sorry, no, sorry, a school master uh, kit, how to convince a school master that, that he wants this program. So, you know, this, 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 uh, this uh, magic card trick. And another one is, I, I, in Israel, there is, that's, I asked you, but there is an ID, national ID number. So it, the, the, the ninth digit is really an error, error uh, detection uh, digit. So, you know, I tell them, you know, with my with my telepathic power, I will guess these things. So after you do these two things, you know, everybody's, you know, wow, okay, come to me. But, so, but basically she knows them. And we also sort of, there are some centers where we are unhappy because last year, you know, we had this and then and three times the, the students came, but it turns out the kids went to some, you know, field trip and didn't notify. So it's, it's something, it's a dynamic thing, but now we have more or less a stable uh, thing. Some of them, the students by themselves uh, propose, like there were students in this place or something, so. Some of half of our schools and half our half are like centers where they like after our so in, in Jaffa for example there is such a center so they they try to pick these are low income areas but they try to pick uh, students with potential and give them like enrichment they give them a meal you know after so because if you do it in 4 p.m. you know if you're hungry then it's not good so give them a meal it's a whole program so we we are like one component in this so, uh, so it, we usually don't invent things it's, it's it's either schools or these communities more or less half and half um, okay that's okay that's some of the student training so you know the, the most sexy pro, uh, pictures are those at the net the sorting network so you, I use chalk uh, so it's 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 outside it's in the university I mean I don't know if I could point here Ah, okay, so, I mean, there are some, this was on a Friday, and some people going there to the, the, the Aspar Museum, so they look, what are these, what is this weird experience, and uh, what are these weird people doing? So you see, this is the network, so I, I drew it with a, with a chalk, with the help of two of the students, and sort of, I was a bit in, on rush, so I, so I, there was a, a hardware error, so two of the, I forgot two of the links, so they got stuck there, so I told them, you know, it, you will make these errors. It, you know, you should you should be aware. You make these errors, so you know it's not a it's not a disaster to make an error. Make sure that you're not doesn't you know throw you throws you back. Uh, okay, so they, they do this and uh, you know they keep sorting. They're very happy, and at the end they show whatever I, I you know you make some funny either alphabetic or numbers something. So okay, and, and we have uh, like we had thirty plus students, thirty four students. So uh, okay, um, so we try to really accompany this activity. The, the students have to write a weekly report, and we read this report, and, and we, uh, we tell them, you know, you could write in the report that the activity didn't work well, or that we have traveled there. We want to make sure to improve this thing. I'm not going to take a grade, to, to give a, a worse grade if you, if you uh, tell me that this didn't work well. We just want to see where we could improve. And actually, okay, and, and, and this woman from Dean's, the student's Dean's office, I, saw, I, I wrote she, it's a she, okay, it's a woman. It's really, it's really a great combination. I, the first year, I just ran this activity with, with a TA, with somebody like me, but just you know, 20 years younger or 30 years younger. 
it was tough managing it. This, this, this input from this, uh, from this woman who knows about more about pedagogy, and she, she was a teacher in many of these schools herself, so she knows about it. It's really helpful. It, uh, I mean, before we had all these things on our shoulder, it wasn't so great. I mean, so, so it's really a process that we are, you know, it's not a one-year process. We, we, we improve. We, we try to improve. Uh, okay, so I say this tight cooperation with this unit, to specifically with this woman, uh, it was really uh, invaluable. So, uh, okay, some other things. Uh, so we have got, uh, uh, in, in addition to this ongoing interaction, we, we decided after one year that having one meeting with all the students, we, we see the students, I mean, I see the students in the street. I mean, I went to buy something in a pharmacy and I saw two students who told me about this. Uh, and then they write these reports. But having a meeting with all the students in, let's say, for three hours or something is really helpful. They tell, basically, we give them each group five minutes. They prepare three slides, and they say what's going on, what type of school it is. Uh, uh, maybe I'll videotape it this time. It's really, I mean, you hear great, I mean, great stories in terms of it's interesting. And, 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 and also, they see that the, 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 the problems they have are not their own. It's shared by others. I mean, it's the difficulties, let's say, not the problems. So if you're interested, uh, next Friday in a week, we have this uh, meeting in Tel Aviv. So <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, uh, okay, um, yeah, when I looked at the, I mean, when I saw the, da the dates of this uh, meeting, I shifted. So today I have a midterm exam in my computability course, but this, the, the TAs will, the teaching system will take care of. So this, this, but I can, if, I must be in that meeting. So it's, so I, so, so I arrange this. Okay, and we have an end of term meeting. Uh, so we, we invite, not invite, we make sure that the center finances a bus or whatever, minibus. To bring all the kids, some of the teachers, and some of the parents to the campus of Toledo University. For the vast majority of them, it's the first time you know, they step on the grass of a, of a university campus. So first, the students take each group, their own group, which is rather small, you know, in the corridors. I don't know, show them some lab or whatever. I mean, lab, lab in computer science is just a bunch of computers. I mean, it's sort of boring. But uh, maybe some skeletons in the biology department. Anyway, it's sort of interesting. And then we bring all of them to a, to a big auditorium which arranging that is also not that easy, but you know, Tel Aviv is, okay, anyway, we do that. Uh, we invite somebody for a popular science talk. This time maybe we'll have a popular science and arts talk, but anyway, we try to, it to be attractive. And then they get graduation certificates. This is, this indicates that this, uh, they're really, you know, they want me to shake hands with them and take pictures and the, the professor. There are about, I don't know, I don't remember, 300, 200 kids. It's not that, uh, like yesterday we had this experience, I really wanted, or but anyway, for them, it's really meaningful. And we tell them, you know, this campus exists. There are more, more courses here. We hope that you will, this geographically, it's not like here. Geographically, there are, most of them are within 10 kilometer radius. So it's, uh, and, and after the, the, the very end, uh, okay, the students, sorry, the kids go away. We go to some smaller room, pizza and beer. So uh, it's like we, we try to do a concluding, uh, you know, session, but having, you know, uh, some students got a bit drunk last time, so I should make sure that, you know, they don't consume more than one bottle of Australian wine. Or, uh, okay, so here are some, some, some pictures from the, you know, the, the activities that sort of, I mean, up, I managed to, so how do I do it? Not this way. Okay, so these are the two, these are two uh, students who were teaching. This is some Arab neighborhood in Jaffa. Uh, you see the, the kids who are, I don't know, maybe eighth grade, so they're, you know, Physically, they are bigger than this. Uh, this was really, uh, these two were uh, wonderful. In, in addition to inventing interesting things, this was a very hard, very hard group. And we, we visited there once. I mean, th their span of attention of these kids was, I think, three minutes or something like that. I mean, it was really, we had to have one of the guides from the center to be there to make sure that, but, but they were really wonderful. Actually, this guy had terrible teeth problems, and this uh, student somehow managed to arrange for him free you know, dentists, and so it sort of expands to more than just, uh, it was really, really, really high, really high quality students. I'm, I'm really impressed. Okay, this is, okay, this was some sort of a paramilitary, uh, we have some, I don't know, it, these are, there are ninth graders, but they're, they're, you know, training to be technicians or something, so, so we did, you see the network in a different style, but uh, the, the sorting network and the, uh, let's see. So here, okay, you see, this is a Muslim student we have, so in some uh, village, Taibe, in some village. This was amazing, actually. She, so the, 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 the school, I think, is closed on Friday or on, on Saturdays. She managed to convince the school to be opened for her on Saturday, 
and actually taught not just one group, but two groups completely voluntarily. Unfortunately, so she worked for two, two years. There was another student from a village nearby who continued, but now we don't have one. We have only one from far away, so we will not be able to continue this thing. And by the way, um, I sent I send one of the students, the graduate, the student who graduated from the program a year, in the first year, uh, I sent him as a spy, to, not spy, but he was to, to this place. So he came to see the, the, you know, the class. He said it was all in Arabic, so he didn't understand the word. On the other hand, he could follow every move. You know, it was because this is, this, you know, the, the magic cards or whatever. So it was really, really uh, impressive. And then, and actually, last year, the student who took part in it, her academic mission, uh, she, 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 she suggested that he, she will translate those, uh, those tasks from Hebrew to, that we have from, from Hebrew to Arabic. So that's what, uh, what she did. So it will be more accessible. These are more, you know, activities uh, in different, uh, different schools. This was also interesting here. So this guy, this is in Ramle, which is a mixed Arab and, uh, and, and Jewish uh, uh, town or city. These guys are, 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 are Jews. The, the, the students were Arabs. There are some, I guess it's like here. I mean, supposedly every student knows English, but in, in fact, uh, in practice, not every student there knows Hebrew, so they have some communication difficulties, but I think they, 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 they manage. Okay, this is an interesting story. So one of the places, this is not low socioeconomic, but it's a, it's a school with uh, kids with uh, cerebral palsy, so very strong motoric problems. Uh, actually, very impressive school. This, this is not the seats. They've got, in the basement, they've got a swimming pool, you know, heated swimming pool where they've got, they do physiotherapy and so on. So it's a school where they've got lots of resources, but still the, the students are very limited, uh, restricted what they could do motorically. The students uh, who taught there managed to do things that the, 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 the kids participated in. So again, it's a challenge, but... Uh, Okay, so uh, okay, this is something new. So Tel Aviv, Israel is called the startup nation. I don't know if it's justified or not. There are many startup uh, companies and so on, and uh, that's the big scene. Uh, so uh, and most most third year students work part time, which part time actually in many cases becomes almost full time. But you know during their studies they work in some IT companies, many cases in startup companies. So we thought it would be a good idea to have this, the kids visit a startup or an IT company. So we started the pilot last year, and this year one of the students, Matan, he didn't write his name, but uh, we, he suggested to, to, to back this up. So we are going to have every, every uh, group will visit one well, startup. One of the startups is Google, so you know, it's, not, it's not exactly a startup. But anyway, a place where they could host them and then show them. Google actually is one of the most looked after, sought after places to visit. They've got all these shows and free sandwiches and you know billiard table i'm not sure it's so but, you know but anyway that's uh, so it's so I, ho I hope to join them to see how how google looks from the inside uh, this actually so so he actually set up something kids startup day so where he tried to mediate between companies small companies who may so we hope to have like we've got 15 groups so we have to have we hope to have 15 or or that that number of companies that they will visit uh, this is this is some pictures from last year visit. So you see some guy from one of the I think it's Soluto or something explaining to the kids and the, the kids. You know, some of them are looking at him, some of them are not. But anyway, I, I, it was an experience for both sides actually. Also, the, the hosting startup they, they said they're enthusiastic about doing it again and so on. Uh, some numbers. So this year we have 34 students. It grew. It started about 20 and it grew and uh, so it, that's probably a good uh, good sign. Uh, and they, okay, so they teach approximately 200. Uh, pupils at 17 different centers. Right now, the kids age is between 9 to 14. And as I say, mostly are middle school kids. The middle school, someone when you reach upper level school, they, they're, they're obsessed for three years with matriculation exams, so they, they hardly have any time. At the middle school, the, the principals have more, more freedom. And we have maybe one or two, like fifth grade, which is, or sixth grade, which is the, the upper elementary school level. Mike was teaching it to two years old, right? So we could do it with. Uh, with four, with six, uh, sixth grade. Uh, okay, so some fun feedback. So kids' feedback. So this experience expanded my knowledge. Uh, I think everybody should study this material. If I enjoyed it, everybody should. Uh, I, I didn't uh, edit it too much. My parents are very proud of me. Uh, they understand it's a good stuff. My family encouraged me to continue. I think. Maybe more interestingly is the, the feedback from the students. And these are really high quality students. Really students, many of them I would love to you know, advise for a, for a master or something. So 
So I know specifically who wrote this, a very serious guy. This course contributed to me more than any other course at the university. You know, that's, I mean, you get feedback like that, you say, you don't, you're not doing something bad. I mean, you, it's, it's, really, it's really something. Students get a wider perspective of society at large. Many of them, you know, they grow up in a, in a good neighborhood of, I don't know, Tel Aviv or some other city. They, they go to the scouts in the army, they, they go to the intelligence, they're only surrounded by people like them, then they go to, to some startup or, or to Google or something. So they don't, yeah, no, question? No, sorry. So, you know, they just see people from the same, uh, people like themselves. So they, they're exposed to some other layers of society. So probably the, the gaps in society in Israel is not as big as, as you know, in India, but still it does exist. So, uh, the challenges we cope with help us be in charge, take responsibility, and develop different, better facets in ourselves. So I think that's, uh, that's, that's very encouraging to get something like that. Uh, so from a four-year perspective, it seems like a success story. I mean, one should not say what I'm doing is a success story, but I think, you know, I think it's a... Okay, I'll, I'll say something about, you know, can we measure things or not. Okay, I think why is it good? We have really great teaching material. Computer Science Unplugged, you know, is amazing. Uh, Scratch is a very good thing. Uh, the, the things that students contribute is, is good. Students are really enthusiastic. You know, I mean, this guy, this, this startup thing, he's now working, you know, working, they're working hard in, in, in IT. But say, you know, it's, it's, it was important for him, he wants to make a difference. The woman who will host them in uh, Google, she did the program before I was in it, but in similar natures. And, and she was the one who came to teach Scratch to the students themselves. So, so, the students see that it matters and they continue to, uh, I mean, you know this from this forum that you have, but it's, it's nice to see it. Okay, this tight cooperation with the, the, the pedagogic unit and specifically this woman was really, really a great factor for what we're doing. And we have sort of a, you know, great stuff is important, but also it's important to have sort of good organizations. And I think it took us some years, but now, so, we recruit the students, so I don't know, at the end of the year I go, if I teach uh, Introduction to Computer Science, I tell them, you know, there is this course, maybe not for second year, but third year, and then I meet a student on a cinema tech in, in Tel Aviv, and he tells me, will you teach it next year as well? So, so, so they, they hear about it by now. And, uh, and now we, we, we uh, recruit, we publicize and recruit them during the, during the summer. In Israel, it's sometimes a problem because some, some of these students in summer don't go to Peru or to India or to whoever, so, so but, um, we have good, good coordination with the center. In every center that we teach, be it a school or be it a community center, we want to have somebody, some adult, who is in charge. So if the kids go to next week to a field trip, we want him to tell the students or her to tell the students. But I don't want the students to, still, sometimes that happens. I don't want the students to go half, they take public transportation, so you know, to spend an hour getting somewhere and then no kids. It still does happen, but. Uh, uh, and, and if there are problems, uh, the first layer sort of is this woman, and, but if not, we sometimes go there, talk to the principal. Sometimes we solve it, sometimes not, but, uh, but there is somebody to, to talk to. It's also a lesson we learned from first experience. And we have strong support from the computer science department. Having, I think the major thing is having uh, this credit for the students. It really helps. It's not free credit, they work for it, but it helps. It was like the first year I did it, so they say, okay, the, the single major computer science students, no problem, because they've got many elected. But the double major, well, they've got hardly any, any points, elected points. So, but I told them, you know, we already have these students. I mean, you would ruin the, the activity. So, okay, this year it will be okay. okay. Next year, the, same, the, 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 the guy in charge changed. So it was the same story. The third year, they didn't ask anymore. So, you know, <laughs> you have to sort of, uh, it's just now in the catalog and the... Uh, but, but, uh, but also you get, uh, so, so for me, for example, it's not completely voluntary, it's, it's like part of my teaching load. It's not obvious, it's completely not obvious. You know, instead of teaching one more session of introduction, I teach this, so it's, uh, and I get a teaching assistant. So this whole thing, you know, it, it, you know, it's good for university, public relation, blah, 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 but still not every department supports it. So, so all these things I think were, were helpful. Okay, so the future. So. It, what impact will this have? You know, it's, it's, I, mean, I think this question is being asked from computer science unplugged in general. You know, will these kids get to higher education? Not necessarily computer science or science or computer science. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not obvious. I mean, and I'm not sure we have the means to really measure it. I mean, because we have a few kids from there. We hope that we will see them. But 
how many of the students will continue, you know, sort of, sort of voluntary community centers in the course of future career? Actually, this I think I'm quite optimistic about because many of the companies actually are aware of the fact that it is part of their sort of mission to contribute to society. So now in Intel, they do like concentrated days once in a while, or so. But on different character of, of, of help to the community, I think there is a good chance that, that the students will, will be involved in it. I mean, not everybody in such companies is involved, but I hope that these students you know, will, will be involved. Um, okay, so I think, okay, that, you know, that's famous quote from Niels Bohr, prediction is very difficult, especially about the future. So I don't know, uh, but I, I hope we are doing you know, something reasonable. Uh, okay, so this is the first and probably main part of the talk. I, I, I want to talk a few, a little bit about this other part, which is of a different nature and maybe a bit orthogonal to the, but it is to this nature of this, uh, you know, meeting. But it, it is, you know, it, it is, uh, it does belong here. I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't talk about some theorem or something that I proved. It does belong here because it's also about uh, computer science, maybe mathematical, more computer science education in a different uh, area. So this is for life scientists and this is a project. I'll give credit uh, at the end. So, so, so I do talk about it. So, if, so bear with me, please. Uh, okay. So this is and now for something really different. I like it. No, he doesn't like it. You know, that's from Monty Python. And, uh, so, okay. So now for something completely different. This is CS at LS. Uh, so this is computer science at life science. Uh, teaching computer computers singing in the life sciences, or alternatively, okay, that's a bit of a, you know what what we think. Let's say what every biologist should know about algorithms. So that's what we think. I don't, don't want to pretend that this is universal. But OK, I, I claim that this is the, OK. OK, so basically there is a cultural gap between biology and computer science. Biology is very descriptive. And, and I, I talk to the, we have a program of uh, students who do double major computer science and biology. Many of them complain that biology, everything is descriptive. Nothing is exact. Uh, you have to remember many things. Others complain computer science is too concise, too, too exact. So, so you know, it, it, it's really different cultures, different academic cultures. Okay, but there are many academic cultures, right? I don't know. Computer science philosophy, also there is a big gap. But you, we don't care about these gaps usually. Why do we care here? Okay, I care a little bit because I'm doing for my real life. No, I'm, this is also my real life. But, but for, for, you know, for my research, I do computational biology, which is exactly in between. But, uh, Okay, that, that's, that's supposed to say, you know, this rigorous abstract versus descriptive, but uh, I think probably most of you know, but uh, so in the last, let's say, 40 years, so there were, I think, I shouldn't generalize, there were many revolutions, but there were two revolutions. One which most of us are, are aware of is the computer and, 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 and communication revolution, you know. So now we have Google and Facebook and, uh, I don't know, Gmail and the... Uh, and Google Maps and, and, and whatever, and, and Skype, you know, it's amazing, you know, Tim Bell in Christchurch talking to us here. So all these things, you know, okay, some guys here are very young, but most of us are old enough to know that didn't exist, I don't know, 25 years ago. You guys don't know it, but I don't. Um, uh, okay, so, okay, so that's one revolution, the computer and communication revolution. But there was another revolution, there is another revolution, that's the biotechnological revolution. So many things which are undreamed of, I don't know, 40 years ago are now a reality. Like, think about the, the human genome, sequencing the human genome. I mean, now, it, now, now they say that sequencing a new genome, I don't know, is $1,000, and in, in, in five years, it will be $100. So maybe not in India, but maybe in the US, it will be part of, you know, you go to a doctor, first he wants to see your genome. So this is undreamt of. So biotechnology has really expanded. It's maybe like physics in the beginning of the, 19th, of the 20th century. Um, so modern biotechnology provides huge, and, and it also provides huge amount of data. So previously, like a PhD thesis, 25 years ago, it could be analyzed a single sequence, a single gene. Single gene is, it's these letters, A, C, T, G. So single gene could be 800 letters. So it's a string, we could write it, okay, it's, it's a bit long string, but you know, we could write it on, a, on one piece of paper. Now we talk about genomes, genomes are billions of things, and we talk billion, genomes of many people and so on. So you can't handle this thing without computers. Okay, so this actually has led to the, the growth, to the birth of this, this field which merges the two, by, uh, computational biology or bioinformatics. So the computer scientists try to develop algorithms which will help analyze this thing. But the gap still exists. It's like the biologists bring the data and the computer scientists analyze it. And it's not clear 
it's great for the biology because it's like you have your data, you ship it somewhere, and they give you the results. It's not necessarily that you know what, how it was. OK, so this is just uh, some slide from this new, new sequencing technology. So uh, this is, I don't know, supposed to. Probably it's more math than computer science, but anyway. Uh, so this is why we need a computer. We got all this data, and we need a computer. OK, great. But the question is, that do we also need, do the biologists need to know something different than they did, I don't know, 20 years ago, or even now? So the curriculum of biology, the biology curricula, has changed a little bit, I'll show. But we think not in, a, in, in, we think not in the correct way, no, no. or correct. I don't want to be to judge, but not in a sufficient way. OK, so new generation biologists uh, will definitely routinely use mathematical models and computational approaches. The question is, will they understand what they're doing, or will they just push a button? And, uh... OK, so uh, together with a PhD student of mine, who that's a that's major part of his PhD thesis, we're thinking of how to bridge this, this uh, cultural gap. We're not doing the first ones or the only ones. It's... OK, so we are thinking of incorporation, incorporating uh, Computer science education in life science curriculum. We're not thinking of, of doing a, a Bachelor of Computer Science as part of uh, biology. That will be stupid. And most biology students will, be, will not be open to this. But we want to sort of uh, like purify some ideas that we think will be very helpful over there. Uh, OK, so uh, what happens in many universities these days, not all universities, but many, let's say, I don't know, MIT or the Technion News or something. So, the biology students are exposed to bioinformatic tools. So that, these are basically just like the applets. I mean, more sophisticated, but you know, you, here is the file of data. Here is this, push this, push this. You get the output. Uh, they do study some math, but usually it's calculus. They don't study anything discrete, which is what they need for sequencing and stuff. And, and, and in, in the best case, that's not always the case, they do some, some usually not expanded, but some programming. So they, maybe they know Perl or maybe know C or something like that. That's it. OK, and what we claim, this is not enough. Okay. The, the picture is not mine. It was drawn by the wife of my student's partner. OK, anyway, it's in the family. OK, so here is something, a quote from the National Research Council on national, of the National Academies. Uh, the report recommends a comprehensive re-evaluation of undergraduate science education for future biomedical researcher. It calls for a renewed discussion of the ways that engineers and computer science are presented to life science students. So there is an understanding that we need some sort of thing like that. The question is how to do it. OK, so the challenge is to go a step farther because just programming or just learning how to handle these tools. Uh, so teach some computer science concepts, principles, and fundamental ideas to, to life science students. Some abstract algorithmic thinking. Use of discrete models, not just calculus, which anyway goes above their heads, I mean, I'm sure. Uh, and, and giving them tools to communicate with the, communication, with the computation community. So, so, OK, I don't expect the biology, there's some so bright biologists, they will do everything by themselves. But in general, I don't expect them to invent the algorithms, but I expect them to understand what we're doing. So, or, and the good input to do these algorithms. Uh, okay, so what we are proposing is a new course. We call it Computational Approaches for Life Sciences, and we want to deliver the computer science way of thinking or culture or language to biologists. Okay, so there is a course that uh, was developed uh, mainly by my student, Amir, and with my help, and uh, we taught it, mainly he, I visited there twice in a semester. We taught it in the Technion. Technion is the Israel Institute of Technology. We taught it twice there. It's an interesting question. Why did we not teach it in Tel Aviv University? But you know, there are always politics, and this is not, and this is that. Anyway, so the, the Technion were very receptive to us. They say, OK, sure. The Technion want to really to, 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 to change their curriculum, and they were very open to it. Tel Aviv, they're very, somehow they're very conservative. This is, oh, I'm, I'm being taped. Well, OK. Uh, Fortunately, I got tenure, right? So I could say whatever I want. Uh, OK, so, um, so it was taught twice already at Technion. Main goals are exposure to computer science language and fostering some abstract thinking. Um, of course, it helps when the teacher does such a brave new experiment is, is good. So actually, this student, this PhD student of mine is a great, great lecturer. He both got like distinguished lecture in Tel Aviv, and he got distinguished lecture of the Technion for this course. So, so, this does help. So, and so and again, the number we started with like 10 students, and this year there were 20. So, you know, you do something good, and the rumor spreads. So, uh, 
So one should not be discouraged from, but okay, if we had to have too few students, the techno would not open the course. So fortunately, you know, it's. Okay, so just, we use there, I don't know, just an example, Conway's game of life, you know, you've got this grid, and uh, if you've got too many neighbors, you die of, uh, of density, if you're too few, you die of loneliness, if you've got the right number, you multiply, and so on. So, so it, it could teach don't know, some graph theory, some finite automata, discrete mass, you could think of what happens at the, you know, the limit. There's some, there's some things there that, that, you know, that, that keep, keep changing, but they, they go into some cycle. Hard problems, you could expose them. I'm not teaching them a proof of Cook's theorem, but we could tell them there are these problems which are hard and so on. Uh, and decidability, uh, you could view this thing as an image. So we do some image processing, and image processing is very important because image, imaging in biology these days is, is really a big thing. So, I mean, we don't go to the great depths, but we just explained to them that the uh, JPEG, JPEG image is not a mystery. It is a, it's something, there are bits there, and, 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 and what, what do you do? And then, you know, 255 is, I don't know, 255 is, is, is white, and zero is black, and, and we do some manipulations, negative, positive, stretching, very simple things. And we teach them Python. We believe, just like in the case of the kids, we believe that you need some, I mean, it, definitely this cannot be just abstracting. We, we do some, so, and Python, Python is, not, uh, is not Scratch, but I think Python is really a great, a great language without getting into the messy details, you know, pointers. On. Python is, I think Python is a great first language. We use Python. So Python, by the way, became, replaced Java as the first, the most popular language in computer science 101 in the States. So uh, and we also adopted it in Tel Aviv University for the intercourse. Um, okay, so. Re rephrasing, I guess it's Kennedy. Ask not what algorithms every biologist should know. Biologists should know. Ask what every biologist should know about algorithms. So I don't want to teach them algorithms. I want to teach them about thinking about algorithms. Uh, okay, so that's how we vision or view or hope the 2020 bio curriculum. So six years from now, you know that, okay, we still will teach these bioinformatic tools and math and programming, but we also teach them some graph algorithms some discrete mass and some sequence analysis, know what similarities and, and whatnot. Uh, so we have this course, we are, we hope, we plan to write a book. It's probably the third book I'm hoping to write and didn't write any yet, so I hope this one will be more, uh, you know, will materialize, but uh, we have, well, it's always good to have a very ambitious PhD student. So I think he really wants to do it, so hopefully it will happen. Um, okay, so some acknowledgements. So uh, the CS at middle school, so it, it started with Mike Fellows back in Palmerston North and then Newcastle. And I also had the discussions I visited a year and a half ago. I was on one, sabbatical, one semester sabbatical in Christchurch, so I talked to Mike Steele, but also to Tim Bell a lot. Uh, at IDC in Israel, Shimon Shoken, we had this project, we translated thing and we also taught. And in Tau, so the, the, the people I named here are the teaching assistants, so Asaf, Noga, and Didi. Didi is the current TA, and Yasmin Denberg is the woman I mentioned who is from this uh, this uh, unit, the, the, the student uh, dean unit, and definitely over 100 computer science students. It, it would not be possible if they would not, you know, participate and, and, and be enthusiastic and have, you know, passion for computer science and, and courage to experiment with this thing. Because, you know, okay, we give them this instant uh, training. Okay, it's intense instant training. It's not. Some of them are, you know, people with lots of uh, confidence, but they came to us, you know. Are you sure I will be able to manage it? And so on. I told him, you know, I'm not sure of anything, but we have this experience for three years. And so I'll find out next week. But uh, uh, okay. Uh, the other project is basically work with my PhD student, Amir Rubinstein, really great, great person. Uh, so thank you all. <laughs> let, let me move from, from bits to uh, yesterday. So. Thanks to the thanks to the photograph taker <laughs> for many things. Questions? Okay, I should say that we don't really we don't really meet the parents. We meet you know only the, the school staff and the, but but no at least if I believe the kids from what they wrote and then and, and some of the we see some of them when they come to the ceremony. No, I think they, it only. 
it only, I mean, I think they realize that maybe it gives the, their kids some opportunity that maybe they wouldn't have otherwise. So, you know, I don't, I mean, maybe in, in, in back in their house, I mean, they, but, but we don't hear of any, this is not something that uh, I think we are facing. Benny, wow. Oh, Mike, <laughs> sorry. That's really impressive. Um, you know, your students are, are um, inventing new activities. It'd be like new chapters of, of Unplugged or stuff like that. How, how are they collected or published or are they? So we have them now, we have them now in the, so, okay, they have to write like a report, which, and we, we have to give them grades. I, I, I always tell them that I have to give grades and it's not like they take my course in the computability and then, you know, I, I mark the, the, the so part of the part of the grade is, is how we evaluate these uh, these these reports. So we've got things like I don't know two or three let's say three four page report in Hebrew usually. Mm. So we put some of them we put some of them on this website. That it's in the Hebrew. Website. I'm not completely happy with it. It's not so the, the Hebrew stuff. The the Hebrew thing that we translated. You know, it, it, we started with great stuff, and I, I think we 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 made it better. Some. It, we made the translation better. The quality of the, of the, of the things in the right now is not, is not high enough. And, and it takes time, you know, to, so it will, I'm hoping this round to, to have one of the students to have his, his uh, task, like improve maybe the language of these things, maybe the presentation. It's not in the same, it's not the same level as your stuff, but, but probably publishing your things on the web also took some time. So I hope we'll get to it. And we, we have to translate it back to English, right? Not back, but. If we want to, to popularize it, we have to do it in English. But uh, we have that many, th that much time, you know. So, uh, so, it, it, it's, so it's, it's, it's on the web. Part of it, the parts that we thought are better are on the web. It's in Hebrew, and they're not in perfect shape. I mean, I just read some of it just now, like a month ago or something, and I wasn't happy with some of the things. But uh, I, I think it's much better to have a non-perfect working thing than waiting for the perfect thing, which will never materialize. So, uh, um, a few questions. Uh, first is, uh, <clears throat> for this program, uh, has uh, the program helped evolve a manual, a teaching manual for uh, these students who are teaching the kids? So, okay, so just let me ask all the questions, then you can answer them at one time. Okay? So is there some written uh, kind of guide for the students who are teaching the kids? Is there some kind of a curriculum? Okay. Uh, second question is, uh, is there uh, an assessment of the kids uh, at the end of this exercise? How much have the kids learned? Is there some kind of an assessment? The third question is, uh, does Israel have a kind of a right to education act which guarantees every young citizen uh, education of you know, a certain level or a certain quality, and uh, I should answer because you know, in my age, I cannot remember too many. So let's okay, fine. let's do the three ones yeah, and yeah. then you ask <laughs> the next one. So, okay, uh, about the the law. So the the law from the beginning. I mean, Israel, you know, is much smaller than than. So there is a compulsory education. I think it goes up to tenth grade or in twelfth grade, tenth grade. So up to tenth grade, there is compulsory education. Whether it is high quality or not high quality, one could debate. I mean, I think nobody is happy about, about education, you know, in, in any country this, that I know. Our, our RT Act, okay, which at least is on paper, for the first time, in, it, it mentions education of good quality, okay? And good quality is also defined uh, further by some other stuff. So is there something like that? Uh, there, is, there is compulsory, you know, a, Primary Access and middle school uh, enrollment. Uh, yeah, every every kid goes to school. That's the original question about every. Well, you know, here and there there are kids who don't know at the age of uh, fourteen run out of school, and but the vast majority go to school. Quality. I mean, it's not in the law, but okay, I could say. I mean, it's a question of definition. I could say whatever we do is high quality. Then it doesn't. There is no like cr concrete measures. I think I talked to some people here. Every every education minister changes things and so on. Over assessment, under assessment. I think overall, I think there is reasonable reasonable education level. Like everywhere else, you know, in the I don't know the neighborhoods where my kids came from, probably the education level is better than what uh, these kids are getting. So we are trying to some some extent, maybe, but but you know, to 
epsilon change that, that's not a whole lot. Um, okay, assessment of the kids. Uh, we do ask for feedback. We don't do a very scientific, I think we tried it first year and we decided that it's not, okay, probably we, if, if we were to do it, probably we were not, we, it's not us who should do it, but somebody else, because what will I, you know, I mean, I, I don't care, I mean, I could say, but I mean, what will we say? We, we invest all this effort and so on, and, and the result was they, they just become negative. I mean, it will be sort of, it, it should be somebody impartial who does these things. I think not for this, but for the unplugged, I think there was one very, very small scale study by some guys from Weizmann Institute, and I think they decided that it had no impact. And I think that was a stupid uh, study, I don't know, it's, somehow they say, do you like computer science before and after? So I think both before and after the, the kids say that they like computer science. So there was no delta, you know, what's, so <laughs> I think, okay, well, this I'm really getting in trouble if that's online. Um, Anyway, we don't, we don't, we don't do an, an assessment. We do, we do ask them to write, like, okay, I, I, what I note that what I showed you, I mean, we have, actually, we published, a, we published some paper with one of the, the first TA we wrote in, in some Israeli high school teacher's uh, magazine. Uh, so we, we put some quotes. The quotes themselves, you know, the kids who bother to write, to, to write the feedback, I cannot stand with a gun to their head and... So the, the kids who, who write feedback probably is biased towards the kids who are enjoyed. As I said, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to evaluate this program. I'm, I'm not sure. Somehow I'm hoping that if they give us reasonably good feedback and the, the school wants us to come back there and so on, that, that we're doing something right. But I don't know. It, these things, I, I think, you know, all these things, I mean, there is a new math program. Do you, I mean, it, I, I feel, you know, I also should do some research and go windsurfing and stuff. So the day is, the day is short. Um, what was the first question? Manuel. Manuel. Okay, basically, okay, so there are like two parts here, what, what we do. One part is the unplugged thing. So we have this, uh, we don't have a, you know, an, a, the, the, the main, what, what we did in the, the translation and extension of unplugged, we say, okay, here in these cards, you know, you, you, you put a dot with a marker, make sure on the other side you put two, not just this, uh, this page, because then you could see the dot, put, I mean, staple two, two more, uh, you know, blank pages, so it will not, so this is sort of a manual. So we have a manual for this unplugged thing. So we have eight, eight uh, lessons, they're quite good. We have maybe 14 more lessons for the activities the student designed. I think they were, they're okay, but they're not great. And for the scratch, I, we, it will be stupid for us to develop things. There, 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 are, there are, there's lots of scratch activity. So we, we assembled some things uh, from this woman who is now, you know, software engineering in Google, because she's teaching it to many, many places. So we, we assembled some, some things, and the students are good enough that. So in, in one school, for example, they went there and they discovered that, that already they studied scratch. So on the spot, you know, the students switched to HTML and JavaScript and then did that. So. Um, so that's it. So, so there is not, there is some guidelines, but not, uh, it's, it's not like a manual for a book. Yeah, uh, I mean, so when you indulge in this kind of uh, activities, uh, one is what they learn, that is one part of it. I think the most important thing is that what we learn, uh, like you and your uh, students, uh, uh, what would you say are uh, kind of uh, that impact? Um, you mean the impact or what? We learned a lot of how to handle so, so for example, we decided to add programming because we saw just the beautiful unplugged thing is not enough for the kids. Um, maybe I didn't do such reflection. Um, we also learned by, by having hard time that you know, having a good pipeline and, and streamlined process is really important. We know what we want, we know what we tell the students and so on. We learned that we should expect the unexpected, I mean, that we cannot predict everything which will happen, and, and, and that's part of the, so, I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, I don't have any insight, you know, you should do a binary number. Okay, I could recommend, like I always tell them, start with the binary number, then go to the error correction, then do, then do a map coloring, and then do whatever you want. In your, this is something I think I learned. I tell the students, you are the boss. I mean, okay, we give you, we give you like, Guidelines, you're the boss. You're the guys who manage these things. I think this is important to the sort of the student realize that they're. Um, 
okay, I, I could think maybe of more, but that's that off the top of my head. No, at the middle school level, they are not assessed for grades or anything. This, this thing, this thing is not assessed. Now, how do they continue their further education if it is not assessed? How do I, sorry? <coughs> for this particular program. The program is, 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 not, a, is not part of the curriculum. Okay. So it's, it's it, that's why I say, it. So, so in middle school, the, 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 the school master has quite a lot of freedom. He could say, okay, you, many of these things are anyway after hours. So the, you know, if they finish studying at one o'clock, so maybe that will be at two o'clock. So, so it's, it's not part of the official curriculum. Um, I, I, something I tried and, and failed, unfortunately. I, 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 thought, I thought at some point that it's better if instead of the students that every time we have to recruit them. Now it's not such a problem because we, have, we give them credit, but before it, like, it was voluntary, it's better if, if we train the teachers. So, so I tried to go, so I went to two teaching teacher seminars, teachers, uh, you know, t teaching uh, preparation schools, uh, whatever you call it. Um, they sort of, it was like a favor they did to me to, 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 to let me teach some teachers. I think the main reason, because it's not in the curriculum, the teachers care about the curriculum. So it's not in the curriculum, so the teachers don't care that much. That, so that's one thing. And the second thing is one of the schools I went to, like after having this selling kit to the principal, so he takes me out and uh, you know, goes and says, I, I told him, I think it's better if the teachers, tell him, no, it's better if one of your students come here because so many of the teachers, you know, they teach for 20 years, maybe they're tired. They see these, you know, these energetic young guys and then who, who are on the step of going to, 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 you know, to Google or to Intel or something, and maybe, maybe it's a better thing for, for the for the kids to, to see. So, so that's something that... Uh, we will have one more question from Kamal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is about the life sciences part. So the things which you mentioned, uh, I mean, uh, let's say graph theory, discrete algorithms, this kind of stuff, this is not done in the school curriculum when it actually could be done. And is it worth... That, that's what we try to have. I mean, yeah, we would like a course like that to be no, incorporated. Oh, in the school, you mean high school? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. high school. <laughs> that would be great, but you know... Yeah, so, 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 so is it worth... I, I think, I, I, I say that... It, it, sorry. So is it worth taking on, uh, like uh, we are trying to introduce computer science in the curriculum, is it worth introducing discrete maths in the curriculum and take that establishment? I think this would be great. The thing is, I, I, I told you, to even introducing that to Tel Aviv University was not possible. I think making change at university level is much easier than changing the, you know, the, 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 the education ministry policy and something like that. So I, I would stick to the university level. I, I agree with you, yes. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, two years ago I saw a talk by Michael Rabin, you know, uh, during a war winner and a very famous neuroscientist who said, you know, we should have 14 hours week of weekly computer science in the, 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 the high school discrete mass, uh, programming, this and that, it doesn't happen yet. And so it's, if it will happen, you know, I, I believe that really computers are, you know, I mean, you should learn, there's some, some, some languages you should know, you know, you should know, probably you should know English or, or some your, your own language, you should, you know, literature and so on, and, uh, and mathematics, and computers is also a language definitely these days, but it takes time. No, what okay, I you will stop it one more question. Yeah, please. Quick comment. That's all. Yeah. We'll take it offline. <coughs> what I observe is that it is not really what we teach. The kids are very good, very sharp. How to manage what we teach, and we know only one way of managing: managing through metrics. Uh, whatever we are doing, and in a process which thrives on intangibles like this, it becomes very difficult. So the crux is how to manage what we want to teach, rather than what exactly we want to teach to the kids. They absorb anything. Very okay, I'll, I'll, let's take it offline, I'm not sure. But, uh. Okay, thank you. So by way of conclusion, I have one information to share. I mentioned this in my presentation. There is an international commission for mathematical instruction, which has a pipeline project called, where are the future mathematicians, are they still around? It is headed by Derek Holton, a uh, famous graph theorist. Uh, I attended an ICME conference in Mexico where I found this information. The, some countries have already some information about what they are doing. Uh, for example, Australia, US, Canada, China, Singapore. I tried to get similar statuses for India, but uh, I was not successful for the last six years. Where are the future mathematicians? Uh, the point which uh, Benny told, 
We are going to have a national workshop on scale-free networks in my university, where computational biology, mathematics, physics, uh, statistics, and uh, biotechnology students are going to sit together. So those who are interested, I can give you some more information. So with this, let us close this session and uh, thank the speaker. Thank you. So we'll